Hi, this vac on how to design the self-bias JFET amplifier was developed as part of the linear and switching circuits unit of the Electronics Combined Framework at Bournemouth University. The objective here is to design a simple self-bias JFET amplifier. In this vac, we'll be using an N-channel JFET. The design procedure is exactly the same for a P-channel JFET, except that we'd need to reverse the polarity of all the circuit voltages. In normal operation, a signal is applied to the negatively biased gate. As the signal voltage varies the gate bias, it will in turn vary the depletion layer and hence control the flow of current through the channel. If you're unsure about this, please check out the related pack on JFET operation. So, to bias the N-channel JFET for normal operation, we need a positive voltage applied to the drain and a negative voltage on the gate. This slide shows the principle behind the self-bias circuit. We can make the drain positive with respect to the source using the supply rail, but the circuit has to make the gate negative with respect to the source. Assume for a moment that the JFET is on and taking a drain current ID. If the supply voltage is 12 volts, say, then the drain would be ideally around 6 volts, with 6 volts dropped across the drain resistor RD. Now the drain current will also pass through the source resistor RS and drop a voltage, which is typically around 1 volt or so. And that will give us the potential gradient shown here in the slide. The trick to the circuit is to hold the DC gate voltage at ground. If you can do this, then as far as the JFET is concerned, it will see a voltage of VDS equals plus 5 volts from source to drain, but it will also see a voltage of plus 1 volts from the gate to the source, or VGS is minus 1 volts from the, the source to the gate. The gate bias, VGS, is the negative of the volt drop Vs across Rs, because they both start at the ground and end at the JFET source terminal. This circuit, therefore, achieves the required negative bias on the gate and the positive bias on the drain. However, it's not possible to directly connect the earth to, to the gate, as this would short out the signal we want to amplify but we can achieve the same effect by connecting a very large resistor between the gate and the ground, say around 1 megaohm. The only DC current that can flow through this resistor is the leakage current from the PN gate to source junction. Having established a circuit to provide the required bias polarities, let us now look at the JFET characteristics to find the best operating point for the circuit. The drain voltage is not too important, provided it is more than the, the few volts required to saturate the channel. The important values are those of drain current ID and gate voltage VGS, which are related by this transfer characteristic. It's a highly nonlinear square law curve, where ID, the drain current, depends upon VGS squared. Now, the maximum possible value of drain current the JPEG can draw is the saturation current IDSS when the gate voltage VGS is zero. Ideally, we'd like the operating point bias to be at half this value, IDSS over 2. So it's halfway between the zero and maximum, and the output has the best chance to swing around without hitting the power and the earth rails. Owing to the inverse square law curve, halving the maximum drain current puts the gate voltage at around a quarter of the pinch-off voltage, minus Vp upon 4. Now, the actual operating point of the self-bias circuit is a combination of the JFET characteristics with the linear part of the circuit. And this is provided by the volt drop across the source resistor Vs. And since Vgs is minus Vs, and in turn Vs, the source volt drop, is uh, the drain current ID times Rs, we have that Vgs is minus ID times Rs. So to summarize, we need to bias the circuit so the DC drain current IDQ is half the saturation drain current for the device 
and the applied quiescent gate voltage VGSQ is a quarter of the device pinch-off voltage. Now the bias circuit that achieves the required negative bias on the gate and positive on the drain remember that the drain only needs to be 2 volts or so above the source to keep the FET in its normal operating region if we connect a large resistor RG across the gate to ground, then this will effectively put the gate at zero volts. The only current flowing through it is the leakage current produced when the minority holes in the n-type channel are attracted to the relative negative bias on the gate. Now, as the leakage is typically so small, it won't build up much of a voltage on the gate even if it passes through the one mega ohm resistor. Finally, on this slide, Notice that VD normally should be around half of uh, the supply rail VDD to give maximum signal swing. And now we have all the ammunition we need to design the circuit. We know we want IDQ to be IDSS over 2. And because of the square law characteristic, this will give us that gates voltage VGSQ should be a quarter of the pinch off voltage. And now all we have to do is to calculate the values of the circuit resistors RS and RD to achieve these values. So in three is easy stages. Firstly, from the JFET characteristics IDSS and VP, calculate the operating point. Simply IDQ is IDSS over 2 and VGSQ is VP over 4. The second step, knowing VGSQ and IDQ, choose the source resistor RS as VGSQ over IDQ. So that it, when it's taking the uh, quiescent drain current, it'll drop the required quiescent gate voltage. Step three, if we want the drain voltage to be halfway between the power rails, then the voltage drop across RD when it carries the uh, quiescent drain current must be VDD upon 2, and this gives us the requirement for RD as equal to be VDD upon 2 IDQ. So, let's now try it with a practical example. This slide now summarizes the design procedure. Step one is to obtain the desired quiescent operating point. So if VDD is 18 volts, we require the drain voltage to be around 9 volts and the drain current to be half of the saturation value or around 4 milliamps. The quiescent gate voltage should be a quarter of the pinch off voltage at VGSQ is 1 volt or minus 1 volt with respect to the source. So those are the required operating point conditions. Step two is to calculate the source resistance required to bias the gate at one volt while drawing the bias drain current of four milliamps, which is therefore one volt divided by four milliamps or 250 ohms. Step three is to bind the drain resistor to drop a drain voltage of 9 volts with a quiescent drain current of 4 milliamps and that's therefore 9 volts over 4 milliamps or 2 and a quarter kilo ohms. And finally we need to apply a gate resistor which is big enough, say 1 mega ohm and that will complete the design. Okay, now here's one that you can try and remember that if you have any queries about JFET operation or the use of the transfer characteristics, please refer to the relevant facts. Thank you.